Welcome to my boudoir. <laughs> All the ladies independent, you know, throw your hands up at me. But also have a seat and listen to this podcast episode because this episode is meant to let you know that no, you don't have to do all the things and no, you don't have to do the things alone. Hey, 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 thanks for tuning in to another episode of Journey to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. And this week, we are going to be talking about the power of finding a tribe that matches your vibe. I'll also be sharing why now is the time for you to start tapping into the power of community. This episode is specially made for all of the ladies who often think to themselves, I can do bad all by myself. And yes, I'm talking to all of you super sheroes out there who are listening and watching. This episode is meant to help you sit back, relax, and reflect so that you can recognize the beauty of supporting others while also being supported. Keep listening through the entire episode because at the end, I'll be sharing three solutions to help you find a vibe that matches your tribe, in addition to sharing some joy gems to help make sure that you stay the course. A couple of weeks ago, I was listening to a podcast episode by one of my favorite, favorite, favorite content creators, Demetria Lucas. She has an amazing podcast called Ratchet and Respectable, where she talks about pop culture, Culture. She talks about her life. She talks about um, all the amazing things that she's doing. And she's just a really wonderful creator. And in one of the recent episodes, I think it may have been uh, two months or so ago, Demetria was interviewing Tarana Burke, who is the founder of the Me Too movement. Demetria and Tarana are friends, so the conversation just really came off as kind of a kiki or a catch up. But Demetria is someone who asked really great questions. There were so many points in the conversation where I felt like I was just listening to two friends having a conversation. But with this, I also felt that a lot of what was spoken about was relatable um, being a black woman. There was a part of the conversation where Tarana started to talk about her need to rest. But in sharing this, she also shared that it almost took a near-death experience for her to understand the need to prioritize herself and self-care and resting. And in explaining this, she basically said that she'd worked herself sick. <laughs> and I found it really fascinating and interesting that this was even a point of conversation considering how accomplished she is and how much merit she has in her work and how well known she is and thinking, well, why would you feel the need to continue to work given all that you've accomplished so much? And when it came down to it, she continued to share that she had worked through to the point of exhaustion and burnout because of her need to constantly feel valued. I guess in some ways other people seeing her value and it took that near death experience before she could even have a conversation with herself in giving herself permission to rest. And as crazy as all of that sounds, like it gets even crazier because the part of the story that really got me um, was hearing her description of the experience that she went through where she thought she was gonna die. I distinctly remember a part of her detailing this experience where she said, I felt like I wanted to call somebody, but I didn't want to make a big deal. I didn't want to make a big deal. And she felt in that moment like she had to question whether or not she should ask someone for help. And she didn't want to be seen as doing too much. And when I tell you, when I heard that part of the story, I started to cry. I remember I was driving to 7-Eleven to get some ice cream. And when I heard that, when I heard her say that, I started to cry because I can relate to it. I can totally relate to it. Health-wise, whether or not I should go to a doctor because I simply didn't want to make a big deal or do too much or cause too much of a fuss um, as a woman, but also as a black woman. And also feeling like if I were to state something, would my concerns be taken seriously. I've even had this happen when I was pregnant with my first child. And that's a story for another day um, in just talking about black maternal health care in the country. But 
I want to know if you can relate to this. Have you ever had an experience where you felt like you needed help, but then you didn't want to feel as though you were doing too much? Or is that just me? But as many times as I've had these thoughts or feelings, there was one um, story in particular that I could think of that really stood out to me. And it happened earlier this year. Be forewarned. This is a story of how sometimes following your joy can be a little hazardous. <laughs> I attended a virtual baby shower back in February and there was one portion of the shower where there were virtual games. If there is one thing you need to know about me, it's that your girl loves to play a good game. I mean, when you think about it, Joy is literally a part of my job title. <laughs> so I enjoy having a lot of fun. And if I'm gonna play a game, I am going to put my best foot forward, in this case, literally, <laughs> so that I can play it hard and play it well. There was a virtual scavenger hunt where you had to run around the house. They would put on the screen items that you would need to find in your house. And I don't even know why I was running because it's not like it was timed. But apparently I got really excited about playing this game. And one of the times I was running in the house and I almost like tripped over my kid. That should have been sign one. <laughs> but then the second time as I was running through the house to get one of the items, I ran into my bedroom door. And at the time I was like, you know, ow. Oh. You know, I let out the scream. I was like, oh my goodness, that really hurt. And I didn't think much of it as I proudly showed off my item that I had <laughs> searched for and I'd found. But then um, when I looked down at my toe, I noticed that it was kind of separated from the rest of my toes, living on its own island in isolation. And I also noticed that it was turned out a little bit. As I was trying to um, squish my toe back to join the rest of its siblings. <laughs> I really didn't think it was that big of a deal. I thought maybe I'd sprained it, maybe I dislocated it. Um, but about 15 minutes later, as I was still on the call, um, my foot really started to hurt. So at that point, I dismissed myself from the activities and I was like, I think I'm gonna pay attention and like start icing my foot. The thing to note about this is that the baby shower was happening around 4 or 5 p.m. So it was still relatively early in the day. But I was home by myself with the kids because Nick had just started training for a new job with the police academy. And the training took place somewhere else that was about an hour away. So he wasn't home and I was home by with the kids by myself. But at one point, um, I put on social media, and this is also very embarrassing, like, hey guys, ran into a door, ha ha ha, do I have any medical friends in the audience who could let me know what a dislocated toe looks like or how I could potentially fix it? Mind you, this is after I've gone on YouTube to see what a broken toe looks like or a dislocated toe to see how I could tape things up, and at this point, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't, again, overreacting around like 10 o'clock or 10 p.m. As I was doing this research, I realized that my foot was getting really, really swollen and it was starting to hurt outside of the toes. But then I was also thinking about, well, what if it's not just simply a dislocated toe? I don't want there to be any long-term effects of me not actually getting a professional opinion. And so with this, <laughs> Again, still not trying to bother anybody. I went and I knocked on my neighbor's door because he's a chiropractor. I mean, back, feet, it's all the same, right? He's a doctor. <laughs> so the kids were sleeping at this point and I went across the hall and I knocked on his door and I was like, hey, Dr. Bill, like, you wanna check out my foot? I'm sure in his mind he was thinking, girl, I'm a back doctor, not a foot doctor. <laughs> but he gave me some really good advice where he said, you know, I'm of the mindset where if you feel like something is really wrong, you should probably go to the doctor. And it was only at that point that I actually considered going to the hospital. Um, but again, because I was home by myself with the kids, I didn't necessarily want to wake them up. I didn't want to take them with me. And so it was only at this point, and this was now at 11 p.m., that I called my mother-in-law and her husband and I asked for help. At 11 p.m., almost 
six hours after this event happened. Within less than a half hour, my mother-in-law came so she could stay with the kids while her husband took me to the nearest ER. And a whole five hours later, I learned from while at the hospital that my toe wasn't dislocated at all. And it wasn't even just a simple sprain. I had broken my toe, y'all. <laughs> I'd broken my toe playing a scavenger hunt at a virtual baby shower in my house. <laughs> Who knew virtual baby showers or virtual events in general could be so dangerous, right? There were a couple of things that I learned from this experience. I had somewhat of a revelation and it's crazy that it took this happening and my toe being broken in order for me to understand how sometimes I operate this way and not wanting to make things a big deal or waiting until I feel like things are at a point of no return or unbearable um, before I ask for help. And as I was stating this to my mother-in-law, she was like, yeah, you could have just called us earlier. And I told her, I didn't want to bother you. It was also in that moment that I realized in my desire to not want to inconvenience anybody earlier in the day, it made the situation more inconvenient for the very same people that I was trying to avoid inconveniencing. But I also want you to understand that this isn't just simply a conversation of getting rid of some tasks or items on your to-do list. Sometimes not asking for support can really be a signal or a sign of something deeper. It can really be a conversation of self-worth and not deeming yourself worthy of prioritizing self-care. It can also be a conversation of not valuing your time as much as you value the time and energy of others, thinking that you and your time are not worthy of rest or deserving of rest. And with this, there could also be a conversation about learned behavior and thinking that you're supposed to take on all of these responsibilities. Like it's a part of your job as women, we do this and we do this really well. So we think that this is just how life is supposed to be. And I would also like to add, and I don't know, maybe this is just me. There could also be a conversation around needing to be in control and controlling the outcome of um, how things happen sometimes. Can you relate to any of this? If so, please let me know in the comments. When I really took time to process these particular events and what had happened, I realized that there were a couple of reasons um, why I didn't ask for help earlier. And the more I thought about it, I realized that these reasons actually used to show up in my journey a lot before I became very intentional about prioritizing self-care and wellness i.e. my joy, so that I could be better for others around me. And to be honest, there are moments where I can still go there, which is the very reason why I've implemented systems and strategies and accountability and community to keep me in line and keep my need to feel like I can do bad all by myself in check. This is something that you guys hear me talk about all the time here on this podcast. If you follow me on social media, it's something that I discuss a lot about the need for accountability and being part of a community and understanding that one, you don't have to do things all alone by yourself all the time, but also understanding how beautiful it can be to have that support when you need it most. And sometimes even when you don't, to just know that you are supported. You who are listening are my accountability partners. My family members are my accountability partners. My friends are my accountability partners. My clients are my accountability partners. Anyone that I share my vision with, I expect to hold me to the things that I say that I wanna do because left to our own devices, as much as we may say we want things, sometimes it can be very hard to stick to the things that we say we want, which is part of my job as a joy strategist and a coach and helping people really commit to their vision of joy. And recently I came to understand <laughs> by way of accountability that one area where I'm really lacking support has been in my spiritual life. The person who really brought this to my attention and my need for spiritual support and building community around my faith life was my brother. <laughs> 
<laughs> you, if you're not new to this podcast, you know I talk about my brother all the time. I love you, Brian, if you're listening. Um, he is someone who really holds me to the vision and really living a faith-fueled, purpose-propelled life. And my brother don't play because when I say that, oh, God told me to do this thing, I've had this sign and this and this confirmation, he is one person that will not let it slide. No matter how clever I may think I am like doing the thing, he'll be like, "Uh -uh uh-uh-uh, but that's not what God told you to do. And I really, really appreciate that level of accountability. And let me tell y'all something, my brother read me. Okay, my brother read me. It was a straight up Holy Spirit read, okay, with love. (laughs) I know that it was with love, but he was a vessel. By the end of the conversation that we had that day, I was basically crying. I was like at the point of tears and just praying and thanking God for really seeing me in that moment because I really did feel seen in that moment and through that conversation with my brother it was really healing and in the moment i didn't understand why i was crying as i reflected on the conversation and that time of prayer and as i really tuned into my feelings i realized why i was so emotional outside of like the spiritual like the holy spirit was really present in the conversation and i really had to accept and understand that while i find that i'm the accountability partner for a lot of people in their journey i mean it's a part of my job it's also a part of the work that i really enjoy because it brings me joy it was through that conversation that i realized i don't have enough people checking for me (laughs) like you know I'm the one that's telling people you should pray more you should get into your word more this is what the Holy Spirit is probably saying these are the ways you should tap into the signs you know you should really build a community around this you should do this with your wit and building your business you should look at this type of thing for your job but when it comes to my spiritual life Outside of my siblings, I realized that I don't have that many people that offer that same level of accountability to me. And aside from my husband, Nick, because he be checking for me too. And in a way where I really appreciate it because he's coming from a completely different perspective. So it really does give me um, a well-rounded understanding of different ways to see things. But outside of my family, because again, the hubby is family. I don't have anybody checking for me um, when it comes to spiritual community and accountability. And apparently, subconsciously, up until that point in that time of prayer and conversation with my brother, I hadn't even realized it. It was a total blind spot. So I'd been sitting with that conversation for the past two or three weeks and just really understanding my need to immerse myself in my church community because again, I have a church that I go to, but you know, with COVID and everything, sometimes it's a little spotty as to when I will show up in church service because I can also watch online. And in the moments where you don't feel like going or if you have a late night, Sometimes it can be a little easier to just say, I'll catch you on Facebook Live. (laughs) Fast forward to last Friday, there was an event at the church called MOPS Thanksgiving Dinner. MOPS stands for Moms of Prayer. I believe that's what it stands for. But basically, it's a part of the women's ministry that caters specifically to mothers. And honestly, if not for the fact that I just had the conversation with Brian that's earlier that same week or maybe the week before I probably would have flaked on going to the event I was tired it was dark outside you know it was cold I was coming up with all the excuses why maybe I shouldn't go but then I was like no it's gonna be fun and I'm so glad that I went because it was so much fun there was food really good food like really cute decor there was trivia there was time for conversation and fellowship Um, but then there was also time for prayer and in the process I unintentionally made a new friend (laughs) y'all it was so cool Um, she came up to me asked me my name we exchanged information she told me about life groups that happen at the church and she was like you should come on Wednesday night and I kind of explained to her how I felt like 
coming to the mops Thanksgiving almost felt like a confirmation from God himself that this was something I really needed to be prioritizing in this season of my journey, community and being in church, but not only being in church, getting more involved in the church. And she was telling me that this was something that she was doing too. And we exchanged phone numbers. If I'm being a hundred with y'all, I didn't think that the conversation would really be something ongoing. I thought that, you know, it would be one of those situations where I say, hey, hey girl, how you doing? Or it would be hi and bye um, every time I would see her in passing in the church. But to my surprise, two days later on Sunday morning, and I woke up to her a text from her saying, I look forward to seeing you and your family this morning. But let me tell you how I know that it was a Holy Spirit thing that placed it on her heart and that I was meant to see that message. Because the very moment that I saw that text message from her, I had just made my kids breakfast and I was about to go back to sleep for another hour. <laughs> but because of her text message, not only did I make it to church, but I made it to church on time. To God be the glory. <laughs> no, seriously, it's a pretty big deal. But I say all this because accountability matters. Community matters. No man is meant to be an island. As people, we are not meant to be in isolation. Okay, when you think of when God created man, he, God knew <laughs> from the very beginning that it wasn't good for man to be alone. When he made Adam, that's the reason why he created Eve. But also understanding that as children of God, we are meant to be in community. God himself is not a singular entity. He's a trinity. There are three parts to him. He is in community with himself, being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if God himself finds that community is necessary, why shouldn't we? So, Having said all this, now that I've shared a little bit about my journey and what's brought me to this point in really prioritizing community, if you're looking to find the tribe that best reflects your vibe, but you are short on time, resources, or you just don't leave the house, I'll be sharing some solutions and joy gems to help you find your new besties with joy. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll be right back. If you have an awareness of your need to find your joy or rediscover yourself or understand yourself better in this season of your life, I would love to invite you to visit my site, ericalassan.com, and take the joy quest. As you go through the joy quest, you'll be able to engage with a vision of what you really desire for your life to be like, feel like, look like, taste like and all the things but more importantly by the end of this self-paced program and it only takes 45 minutes to an hour you'll have clarity in your vision you'll have an understanding and a roadmap of what it takes to get you there as well as a process to make sure that you stay there but lastly you'll have the ability to give yourself permission to actually pursue a life of joy unapologetically. And with this, you'll gain the confidence to live a life of freedom that will actually put you on path for your purpose so that you can start living the life of your dream starting today. Not only do you deserve it, but the world needs you. They need your gifts, they need your talents, they need everything that you have to offer, but more importantly, they need you happy, whole, and healed. And the Joy Quest can help you get there. We're back. And now I'd like to share three solutions that you can use to start finding your vibe tribe <laughs> and embrace community with joy. The first solution that I'm going to share with you is to see where you are personally lacking support. With this, the goal is to really take inventory of all of the areas where you find yourself showing up for others most, but you lack support yourself and where you really find it difficult to ask for help. The second solution that I'd like to share with you is to find friends with similar interests and similar needs. And I know that that probably sounds a little weird because it's like, well, girl, if we both need the same things, how are we going to help each other? But the idea here is to recognize that there's power in numbers. And my third and final solution, which probably won't come as a surprise if you've listened to some past podcast episodes, is to ask for help when you need it and accept 
help when it is offered. This is something that is so simple to implement, but it's also one of the hardest things to do if you feel as though you are supposed to be doing all the things, or if you'd like to be someone who's in control, sometimes the problem in finding a vibe tribe is really just accepting and receiving the help that's being given to us. I can relate to this. There were times early on in my motherhood journey and even in my entrepreneurship journey where people were offering to help me in so many different ways, as far as taking care of the children, as far as helping me with different tasks as it related to video production or editing. Over the years as I've done more self work, I've had to really sit with myself and my thoughts and understanding the mindsets that cultivated that need to really do everything on my own and be independent. Once that mindset was combated and I had that awareness, I then had to institute systems and mindset hacks. The point is you don't have to do everything and you definitely don't have to do everything alone. You can find community in various areas where you need it most. It may not even be something where it's necessarily in person because these days there's a group for everything. Now that I've gotten all of that off of my chest, it is time to tap into today's Joy Gems. And there are two joy gems in particular that I'd like to share with you. And the first joy gem comes from Hebrews 10:25, and it says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And the day is with a capital D, okay? And when they talk about that day, they're talking about the day of Jesus' return. The point here is that we should not give up meeting in community. It says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. And I'm, I'm thinking about church when I think about this. You know, the convenience of not being together, especially after a year like COVID, where it may be more convenient to have church by yourself in your house from the comfort of your couch on your phone or on your computer screen. But how much better is it to be in the house of God itself? But then the scripture also continues to say, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. <sighs> Such a beautiful thing. We are meant to encourage one another. We can't do that if we're in isolation. Community is where we are best able to encourage each other. And also just knowing what's going on in each other's lives. It's easier to pray for someone when you know what's happening in their life. It's easier to encourage them and uplift them and also to receive the very same things. Community is awesome. <laughs> And the second joy gem comes from Proverbs 27, 17, and it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. I mean, I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Like, if you want to be sharp, you got to surround yourself with sharp people. Ba <laughs> Don't leave yourself limited to trying to do things on your own, but also being mindful of the type of people that you surround yourself with. If you are someone who is looking to like raise your vibrations and be more positive and live life in a more healthy and uplifting way, you wouldn't surround yourself with people who don't have that same mindset because anything otherwise will take you in the opposite direction. The point of this verse is to really understand that not only do you wanna be in community with people, but you wanna be in community with people who are really of the same mindset or better um, so that you can be inspired, encouraged, and uplifted in whatever it is that you're seeking to do. You know, my mother always used to say, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. And as a kid, you know, that phrase or, or that saying really irked me because I felt like, well, you don't know my friends and you don't know what my friends are capable of, but also nobody can influence me outside of myself. But over the years, as I've gotten older and a little wiser, I now understand the people you surround yourself with absolutely have influence over your thoughts, your actions, and even your ability to create certain types of lifestyles. So it's imperative that if you are going to be a part of community, that you're making it a community that aligns with your vision, your goals, your energy, and the overall idea of how you live your life and the vision that you have for your life moving forward. Whew. That's all I got for y'all. 
today. <laughs> but before we go, I would love to hear from you. What is one area of your life where you feel as though you could gain to benefit from having more community, more accountability, and more support in your life? Let me know in the comments. And I'd also like to know what's keeping you from finding the tribe that matches your vibe. If you found this conversation beneficial and you're watching on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you're listening to the podcast, anywhere you happen to be getting podcasts, I hope you subscribe as well and that you come back and join us next week because we're gonna be having an amazing conversation around boundaries. Yes, because we all need them. And since we are entering the full swing of the holiday season, there could not be a better time to have this conversation. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about me and my journey, you can follow me on Instagram at Erica Lassan. And if you'd like to know more about how a journey to purpose can benefit you in your what's next, please visit my site, ericalassan.com. So I look forward to seeing you next week and chatting with you then. But until then, remember, we're on this journey together. One feel good thing at a time. Bye.